Making shots isn't easy, and nobody knows that more than the players we're going to cover today, because in today's video, we're going to talk about the worst shooting performances in NBA history. I mean, these are guys that couldn't even throw a rock into the ocean, let alone a ball into a hoop. Let's jump into the video. Now, this first guy, I don't even know if there's going to be video or images to show for him, because he played way back in the day. And when I say way back in the day, I mean the 1940s. But the guy we're going to talk about is Joe Folks, a man who played in the 40s and missing shots was this guy's middle name. For example, there has been 10 NBA games in history where a player has missed 33 shots or more on their own. Six of those 10 games are Joe Folks, a man who didn't know what passing was and wanted to shoot every single shot he ever had in front of him, if that makes sense. The game I'm going to talk about of his many, many games where he missed a lot of shots, this one happened on March 18th, 1948. Not too long ago, I'm sure most can remember it. It. That's a uh, sarcasm. He shot 13 for 55. I don't know if I have to say much more. I mean, he missed 43 shots. Sorry, 42 shots in an NBA game. 23.6% from the field. Pretty bad. It's pretty bad, as a matter of fact. Now, it didn't matter. Uh, his team won 88 to 57. They beat the steamrollers. So you could say they uh, they steamrolled them. Sorry about that. But uh, yeah, Joe Folks is actually a Hall of Famer, believe it or not. Even though his career field goal percentage is 30.2%, he was a two-time All-Star he was a BAA champ and a four-time all BAA slash NBA uh, team member. He is a Hall of Famer, so shout out to him and also rest in peace to Joe Falks. He, he died in 1976. Uh, moving on, when he wasn't supposedly scoring 100 points in an NBA game, Wilt Chamberlain liked to partake in missing a lot of shots. Joe Falks has the most missed shots in a game in NBA history, while Wilt Chamberlain is second on that list with 37 missed field goals in a game. This happened on October 28th in 1962 and despite missing as many shots as he did Wilt still had 53 points so just an average game for Wilt he shot 23 for 60 that is correct he shot 60 times he played 53 minutes that game so that's over a shot a minute I don't necessarily know how that works I guess a lot of offensive rebounds had to be had he shot 38.3 percent from the field and um not really much else to say for this game uh, his team would lose surprisingly you know when you miss 37 shots in a game you don't win uh, who would have guessed that one? Another uh, fun fact here, Wilt Chamberlain has the most 25-plus missed field goal games in NBA history, and uh, nobody nobody really comes close. Wilt Chamberlain was just letting it fly back in the day, and that's uh, because he was better than everybody else, so he could do that. When you talk about missing shots, the man in NBA history to shoot the most shots in a game without making one is a Hall of Famer. Three Hall of Famers on this list so far. It's Tim Hardaway. I've made a short video on this before, but uh, basically on December 27th, 7th, 1991, Tim Hardaway went out there and uh, shot 0 for 17, basically. Straight up, had two points, made uh, two free throws, played 44 minutes, he had 13 assists, so there's that. And uh, his team would win the game, which is good. They were playing the 4-20 and 20 Minnesota Timberwolves, so happy for them that they won that. But who would have thought that the record for the most shots attempted in a game without making one would be held by a Hall of Famer? Going from one Hall of Famer to another, Josh Jackson on January 28th in 2018 shot 0 for 13 in a game. Now what's fun about that one is he only played 22 minutes. So basically, Josh Jackson said, screw it, I'm gonna go out there and I'm either gonna make an impact or have the worst game of my life, and uh, he did the latter, unfortunately. He would be helpful to his team in other ways, like grabbing four rebounds, but unfortunately, thanks to his 13 missed field goals, his Phoenix Suns team would lose 113-102 to 102 to the Houston Rockets. At least Josh Jackson wasn't held scoreless because he did make two free throws, so good on him for that. So that was 2018. Let's talk a little more recent. Let's talk 2022 and we're going to talk about PJ Washington when he was on the Charlotte Hornets. A very, very bad team the last few seasons. Really almost their entire existence. But regardless, PJ Washington, December 3rd, 2022. The Christmas season. Uh, the basket was not very giving to him and he shot 0 for 13 having probably the worst game of his career. Uh, if not the worst, definitely one of the worst. Uh, he played 33 minutes. He did have 8 rebounds, 5 5 assists and 3 steals with 3 blocks so he was filling the stat sheet he just had a big old donut for his points shot 0 for 3 from 3 and he didn't even shoot a free throw either which definitely hurts so less than ideal but it was the Charlotte Hornets so I doubt they really cared because I don't even know if they know who they're playing nowadays it's just a, a hodgepodge of, of random people. Delano Banton was just 24 years old when he had an all time horrible shooting performance going 0 for 15 from 3 in an NBA game 
game. He played 39 minutes versus the Sacramento Kings when he was on the Portland Trailblazers. This literally just happened this past season. Uh, he did have 17 points, which is good. Now, he shot 6 for 26 from the field, which, uh, not good. And he also missed a free throw, so, um, that sucks. But yeah, this is probably the worst shooting performance in NBA history. There's really no saving grace to it. I mean, 6 for 26 from the field, 0 for 15 from 3. Uh, it's very depressing. His team lost by 39 points. It was the last game of the season. I mean, just a, just a bad game overall. But at least he's probably got his worst career game out of the way. So, glass half full. Speaking of full, Eric Gordon had a game full of bricks on February 4th, 2020, just a few months before COVID. But Eric Gordon was probably a little bit sick after this game because uh, he did not have a good one. Shot 0 for 12 from 3. He did have 16 points, which, you know, at least he was finding ways to score outside of what he was supposed to do. He shot 6 for 22 from the field, which is 27.3% for anyone who even cares. And he shot 4 for 6 from the free throw line. So there's that information. Now his Houston Rockets team did win by 15 points because they were playing the Hornets, an absolute embarrassment of a franchise. But yeah, Eric Gordon did not really uh, do much to help them in the win column in this game. Uh, they primarily won thanks to James Harden having 49 and 12. But regardless, they won. Eric Gordon still making millions in the league. So at the end of the day, does anybody really care? Free throws are named free throws because in essence, it's a free shot at the basket. It's a gimme. It's uh, practically a layup, except it's entirely not a layup. Regardless, nobody knows free throws aren't free more than Andre Drummond, a man who holds the record for the most missed free throws in an NBA game, which is absurd considering Wilt Chamberlain exists and he missed his fair share of free throws back in his day. But Andre Drummond on January 20th, 2016, the first month of a new year, missed 23 free throws in a game versus the Houston Rockets. That's, um, that's pretty sad. He only shot four shots total because every time he got the ball, he basically got punched in the stomach and would have to go to the line. He shot 13 of 36 from the line this game. Uh, the surprising thing though, and maybe even the sad thing, is that the Houston Rockets, despite hacking a Drummond, they didn't even win. They ended up losing by nine points. I mean, how does that happen? Regardless, a win is a win for the Pistons, and Andre Drummond found himself in the NBA history books after that game, so that's kind of cool, I guess. Steph Curry's the greatest shooter in NBA history, but even he finds himself on this list in what is probably his worst career game, where Steph Curry shot 5 for 17 from the field and 0 for 10 from 3. This happened on November 4th, 2016, and nothing was falling for Steph that night. A very un-Steph Curry-like game for him. He did end up with 13 points, he had 8 rebounds and 10 assists, so he was helping his team out in some way, as you would expect from the future Hall of Famer. But it is kind of crazy. I mean, you wouldn't really expect Steph Curry to have a game where he would go 0 for 10 from 3 in his career. Even young Steph Curry, you wouldn't expect that. And he still had an incredible year this year. He finished 6th in MVP voting and was 2nd team all NBA. So obviously, it was just a fluke bad game. But still, kind of kind of crazy that the best players in the world can still have off nights that are absolutely terrible. And his team lost by 20 to the Lakers, which, not good. But regardless, that's going to do it for today's video. There are so many horrible shooting performances in NBA history. So I just picked some of my favorites today. There might be a part 2 to this video. There might not. I will not rule it out. But until next time, that's all I got. See ya.